Welcome to Value Investing, the Starvine Way, where my goal is to help you learn more about value investing and compounding wealth with a long-term focus. I'm your host, Stephen Coe, founder and portfolio manager of Starvine Capital. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Information relating to investment approaches or individual securities should not be construed as investment advice or endorsement. Listeners should seek advice that reflects their personal financial situation. Have you ever had the itch to sell your stock after it had a good run? Say it is up 20% in one month, and you're thinking is that you better take some or all of your gains off the table because it may make a round trip. And besides, no one ever went broke taking a profit. Does that remind you of yourself? Yes, it's true. Stocks can often make round trips. But if that's all that's going through your head before making a sell decision, then listening further may be of benefit. Advocates of the buy and hold approach will often say that the best time to sell is never. We all want to identify and benefit from the long-term winners. Those that got into Berkshire Hathaway, Danaher, and Amazon early enough would have in hindsight made an enormous error by realizing gains too soon, or by selling when those stocks were down. All three were down significantly at various points in their lives as public companies, and then took years to recover to previous highs. The question of when to buy seems straightforward if one has available cash. If you can answer with some conviction that a stock is undervalued and the company checks off the fundamental boxes of management and business quality. But deciding when to sell is one of the most difficult and delicate problems in investing. It's important to have knowledge of this area and where the contradictions lie. Let's revisit Ben Graham's line. You are neither right nor wrong because others agree or disagree. You are right because your facts and analysis are right. I would say that thought squarely applies to the sell decision because at the time the decision is made, one can only reason why it is the right thing to do. Only hindsight can show whether it was correct in helping or hindering returns. But even then, it depends when you apply the hindsight. Take Veritiv Corporation as an example. After two and a half years, I sold the stock at $26 in late 2017. I gave up on it after the company's fundamentals plateaued for a little while. This may have looked like a smart decision during the first COVID lockdown in March 2020 when it dipped under $8, a 70% drop from my sale price. Well, fast forward a little more than two years from that point and the stock was trading at $145, or five and a half times the price I sold out. A new CEO came in and really cleaned house, exiting low return on capital businesses, paying down debt and prioritizing resources for the more profitable B2B packaging business. What follows is a view of when to sell from the standpoint of a longer-term investor, meaning someone who makes every buy decision with at least the initial intention of holding for years. And another disclaimer, those who have consistent cash inflows to invest are in a different situation because purchases may not need to be funded by the sale of another security. Here, we will assume the investor has no further contributions to existing investment accounts and thus must sell a holding in order to buy another idea. The first situation that warrants selling is when the share price has increased beyond what you can make sense of in terms of valuation. All the growth has now been priced in from what you can estimate, and the other holdings in your portfolio look far more attractively priced. This would seem to be a rational time to sell, and definitely the most ideal scenario for selling. There is one precaution I would suggest, and that is asking whether you're missing the picture that everyone else is getting. Could there be an outright mistake in valuation? Are you perhaps being too punitive in your assumption of how quickly a high growth rate in revenue will normalize, or wildly underestimating what the steady state profit margins will be? Peter Lynch pointed out that with Walmart, which IPO'd in 1970, one could have bought it 10 years later and still made 500 times the original investment by the early 2000s. Investors in 1980 underestimated how much the brand could grow within even just the US at the time. Could you be anchoring on old valuations? Say an out-of-favor stock that traded at five times earnings for years because it had too much debt or litigation. After ridding itself of those issues, the valuation should hypothetically rise, maybe by a lot. But stocks can remain undervalued for long enough to test our patience, such that when they finally gap up due to becoming less misunderstood, it may be tempting to sell and move on. Value investors are often guilty of selling out too early when an out-of-favor stock recovers and then transitions into a growth stock. The next situation that warrants a sell decision is when a legitimately better idea comes along. Warren Buffett has said that he would sell a stock at three times earnings to buy another one at two times earnings. 
In the event that a clearly superior idea does surface, one should be impartial to whether the stock being discarded is sold at a loss because at any given time, we are invested in a stock for its future. If you have a high level of conviction that one idea is much better than the one being replaced, there should not be much hesitation in selling. But what does matter is that you are not too jumpy and that you don't buy the new idea before having a good handle on your investment checklist items. One important point to keep in mind is that taxes matter and that for taxable accounts, the new idea must perform significantly better to justify selling out of an existing holding. For example, if a stock doubles and then goes up another 50%, you've just held on. But if you take your profits after doubling and lose 25% of your gain to taxes, the new idea must increase by more than 71% to arrive at the same point as the option of just holding on and achieving the lesser gain of 50%. Next, sell when the original investment thesis deteriorates. I include different reasons here, but this category includes anything that shifts the thesis for the worse and displaces it from what you either thought or what you wanted to be invested in. It could be the economics of the business or industry have gradually weakened. The newspaper example comes immediately to mind. It was once a wonderful business, but has been disrupted by the internet. Bad acquisitions are not uncommon and can lead to a decision to sell. Overpaying for assets and taking on a lot of debt can spoil an investment, or acquiring a company in an unrelated business. Here, as a fractional owner, your investment has changed overnight. An example is Stericycle, which was a pure play wide moat medical waste disposal company until a new CEO in 2015 must have wanted to make his mark. Stericycle diversified by buying Shreddit, which is a document destruction company. Overnight, the composition of the business you intended to own changed, not to mention how you thought the capital would be allocated. Meta Platforms, formerly called Facebook, would be a more recent example where investors were miffed by a change in strategic direction. Between 2021 and late 2022, it had already spent tens of billions of dollars in developing the metaverse instead of its core social media businesses. While most people do not exactly understand what the metaverse is, Hindsight will prove whether Zuckerberg's bet pays off, but you as the investor must decide whether you believe it will because that's technically your money that otherwise could have been returned to you via dividends or repurchases or reinvested into its core businesses. Other reasons under the umbrella of thesis deterioration include management not being able to execute on its goals and a need to adjust your valuation if you are too optimistic about the future. It is key to remember that a stock price being down a lot does not necessarily mean it is an investment error. Things happen beyond a company's control, and stock markets can spin out of control. Sometimes, stocks decline much more than warranted by its fundamental performance, and if wanting to sell, it is critical to reassess the opportunity from the now lower price. The fundamentals may indeed be worse than you expected, but what you paid yesterday or the unrealized loss showing on your statement aren't the key things. It should be what lies ahead and what is reflected in the current price that matters. It is human nature to lose patience with investments whose share prices decline a lot after we buy or where the timing was just nasty. Last but not least, sell to adhere to your own risk management parameters. If you have percentage weight guardrails that you had set to prevent overexposure to any single position, then selling occasionally to stay within your own design is acceptable. Such selling is risk management based and not driven by a desire for higher returns or emotion. An example would be to reduce a position at the earlier of it reaching fair value or a specific percentage of the market value of your account, say 15%. This practice can also enhance returns even if that's not the intention. Having to redeploy capital after selling part of a successful holding can give you the opportunity to buy cheaper names and thus lower the overall valuation of your portfolio. Another thing to consider is that all of us are continually evolving as investors. So a certain holding purchased five years ago may now appear different to you based on your current outlook for a particular sector or business model. If the way you view the risk of the company has changed a lot over time, it's really the old you that bought it. And what if you have a hunch that the market will go down? Is that a good reason to sell some of your portfolio into cash? There is no right answer to this question, but I will provide a scenario for you to ponder. If you feel conflicted because you own a basket of stocks, you are convinced are attractively priced on an absolute basis, especially if looking at the companies with a 5-year-plus view, and some economist has swayed you with a dire prediction that the markets will drop 25% over the next year, you sell one-third of what was a fully invested account into cash. Outcome number one, the prediction is wrong, your companies continue to grow through whatever global troubles persist, and that cash you freed up. 
Do you invest in that basket again at now higher prices? Do you keep waiting for the inevitable crash that you thought was going to come? You've traded what was less knowable, where the macro goes and how the market reacts to it, for what you had more conviction on, a more close-up micro-assessment of each company. Management quality, business quality, solid tailwinds, and attractive valuations. Outcome number two, the economist was right or lucky and the market tanks. If that's the case, you better have the guts to buy back into the market without being too cute about the timing. Because remember, markets are forward thinking and can roar back on the first signs that the macro situation is improving or not as bad as expected. And then you'd be back at outcome number one being stuck with deciding whether to buy back at much higher prices. Let's now summarize our discussion. Sell if the price has risen above the value the company is worth to you and you cannot reconcile, despite all your efforts, why the stock is worth as much as it is trading. Use your own view of intrinsic value as the reference point for decisions and have self-awareness of whether you are anchoring to the price at which you bought in. If the stock price benefited during the pandemic from being in the sector like financial technology, otherwise known as fintech, because understandably, demand for such company services were strengthened by everyone being in lockdown. But again, you cannot make sense of how earnings will ever reasonably grow to the point where the current price is justified. Then by all means, sell. Never try to anticipate the top of a bubble before selling. And train yourself to be immune to FOMO or fear of missing out. Even better is if you train yourself to be suspicious of any area of investment where all your peers are jumping into and bragging about the quick gains they made. As I've brought up before, great losses could have been avoided by many by steering clear of pot stocks in 2018 and loss-making tech stocks during the pandemic. Sell if you need funds for another idea that, after thorough evaluation, is clearly the better risk-return proposition. It's easy to shortcut or due diligence for the shiny new idea, so self-discipline is needed here in reaching the conclusion. It's usually less risky, in my opinion, to add more to another existing position in your portfolio that you already know well and have held long enough to gain context on how well management can execute on its strategy. Sell if the investment is now much different and in a bad way to what you thought you were buying. Again, that could be a number of things including a permanent deterioration in the economics of a given industry. And the caveat again here is that if the price has overreacted far beyond what is justified and the company is still financially sound enough, selling could be a wrong decision if you now have an incredible value on your hands, despite the pain of seeing a loss on your original cost. And the last reminder is to sell for risk management reasons, in particular to stay within parameters that were set as guardrails to keep the portfolio from becoming overexposed to any single position. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Questions can be sent to podcast at starvoncapital.com. On a final note, thank you for the reviews on Apple Podcasts as that helps us get discovered.